Lawmakers are back on Capitol Hill following a weeks-long summer recess to address yet another fast-approaching government shutdown deadline. Funding for the government runs out on October 1st. That's roughly three weeks from today. House Republicans are pushing a continuing resolution that would keep the government funded through March 28th. It is coupled with a House-approved Republican bill that would require Americans to provide proof of citizenship in order to vote in federal elections. The White House has strongly criticized this proposal. House Majority Whip and Minnesota Republican Congressman John Tom Emmer joins us now. Tom, it's great to see you. Thanks for being here. So there's a continuing resolution to avoid a government shutdown pending. Will that pass this week in the Republican-controlled House of Representatives? Uh, the Republicans in the House are definitely going to move a stopgap funding bill. Uh, we'll whip the current form of it tonight, which is uh, the SAVE Act, right. uh, which requires only American citizens vote in U.S. Uh, federal elections. And then uh, it will... Will you ha have the votes to pass that iteration of this continuing resolution? Oh, we may. I'm, I'm, you we're going to be whipping it you tonight. you may not. We're going to be whipping it tonight. We'll know better where we're at tonight, Major. Not trying to be evasive. The goal is to pass it this week uh, and then move on to what everybody wants to get done before uh, Yes October. or no, will there be a government shutdown? No, I don't believe there will be. How does this get resolved? I think Republicans and Democrats get this thing done before the end of the month. And that thing that gets done before the end of the month extends spending authority to the end of the year or longer? Well, you have to have a willing dance partner. And at least under the House proposal, it'll have the SAVE Act in it, and it'll have a six-month uh, continued resolution. Uh, the Senate, I don't know yet if they're uh, interested in that long of a period. Sounds like they're uh, but, not. But we do hear that they're not interested in the SAVE Act, which is frankly pretty amazing when you consider that 87% of Americans think that it's not a bad idea to have people prove their citizenship in order to register to vote. So you, it'll be interesting if they say that's actually a poison pill in the deal, Garrett. Uh, Major, I do this to you all the time, <laughs> don't do. I? Yeah, too many hits to the head. But the uh, literally, uh, if that's their poison pill, mm -hmm. what does that tell the American people? You know as well as I do, Congressman, that the statistical probability or actual presence of undocumented people participating in U.S. elections is extremely small. Uh, listen, what we have are tens of millions of people coming across our southern border. I don't know what statistics you can look in the rearview mirror and say that all applies to what we're looking at right now. You've had a wide open border under this administration. You've had more than 10 million people come illegally across the border, and it's nice of you to call them undocumented. The fact is they are illegally in this country, and that needs to be dealt with. They should not be participating in elections. My state, you got a governor who voted, uh, it, or who signed a law that allows uh, illegals to get driver's licenses. How do you guarantee that they're not going to use that license and attempt to vote? They may not know any better. But they don't. The statistics show over and over again that they don't and they haven't. St is this a problem looking, a solution rather, looking for a problem? Is it really? Uh, if, I'm just if, if, it's, if it's a real thing, if uh, they believe that uh, only American citizens are voting in U.S. elections, Major, then there shouldn't be a problem with this because uh, you're just confirming what's already happening if you believe that. But instead, they're saying it's a poison pill, and they're saying even though it's already uh, the case, uh, they're not in favor of it. doesn't make any sense. You can't have it both ways. Last week, former President Trump said he lost the 2020 election by a whisker, conceding something he had refused to concede for almost four years. Can we now as a nation put to rest the lie about the 2020 election, that it was stolen from former President Trump? Major, we should be talking about the issues right now that matter to people in this country, about the inflation that's killing middle class in this country, about the open border, southern border, that's not only uh, contributing to all kinds of people who we don't even know what their background is coming across our borders, but fentanyl overdoses in all these small towns across the country. And we should be talking about what peace and stability around the globe looked like under the last administration. That's what we should be talking about. And that, frankly, is going to be the topic tomorrow night in Philadelphia. When I was in Milwaukee, there was a degree of confidence I'd never encountered before at a Republican convention, talking about expanding the map, Virginia, New Hampshire, Minnesota. Would you say Minnesota is up for grabs still, or has the election shifted away and better for Trump to focus elsewhere? 
Uh, well, when it comes to Minnesota, look, I, I, the policies of Kamala Harris and Donald Trump are going to determine the presidency. Donald Trump has already showed what an America first policy looks like. I would argue that over the last three and a half years, Kamala Harris has showed us what an America last strategy looks like. Uh, the only difference, by putting Tim Walls on the ticket, you may have put Minnesota in play. I don't know if you noticed last week. But before Tim Walls was named as her running mate, Kamala Harris enjoyed a 10-point advantage, much different from Joe Biden uh, and Trump head up. Once she was anointed and was, uh, was uh, recreated, she had a 10-point lead. And she put Tim Walls on the ticket, and she lost five of those right away. So he's not a very popular guy at home. And uh, Would you suggest to the play. Trump campaign that Minnesota is in play and it ought to put resources into Minnesota? I think you've got to be looking everywhere for votes. Period. One other thing. For former President Trump to say over the weekend that he will win without a single vote being cast, mail out ballots haven't even gone out, and that he will prosecute people or wants to prosecute people who are in position of election administration or donors to Kamala Harris, what does that tell you? I, I think he is going to win, and I think uh, he's... But that's a think, not a will. No, no, I, I think it's pretty easy to look at what this election's all about. On the one side, you've got double-digit inflation like we haven't seen in 40 years. People like to say that, oh, inflation is coming down. Major, people in my neck of the woods and all across this country go into the grocery store every week. They see how much they're paying for things. On average, $1,200 more a month than they were paying for the same basket of goods just three and a half years ago. The gas tank, uh, the crime, the open border, the instability all around the globe, whether it's Ukraine or Israel or other places, uh, it's pretty clear the damage that has been done over the last three and a half years. And I think the only candidate who will be on the stage tomorrow night that has shown how you rebuild an economy, that's shown how you seal the southern border, that's actually shown how you can maintain peace and stability around the globe, Donald Trump. It's a pretty easy choice. Tom Emmer, thanks for your time. Thank you.